So hallelujah everyone who's listening to this broadcast and Global Revival Church church members, let God's grace and in your spiritual journey, let there be a breakthrough. I bless you guys. So today, in the end times, in our life, whether we know it or not, the one that uh, infiltrates our life, we're going to talk about the spirit that infiltrates in our life, whether we know or not, and how are we going to deal and respond to the spirit. So we're going to re- study with the Bible today, and then we're going to apply it in our life. So as we are listening to this word, let everything in our life be exposed. Let us humbly give our life before God, acknowledge our life, and through Jesus Christ, that the spiritual privileges that He gave to us, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, all of our bindings in our life, and all the stuff that is stuck in lies, bound by lies, let us be set free. So I proclaim in Jesus' name. So I bless you guys and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read the Bible. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, from verse 15 to 17. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So in the end times, so the serpent, the dragon, Satan, the one who tempts us, the one who deceives us, he is kicked out of heaven and came down to the earth. So the woman that is symbolized here is he, she's going to give birth to a son. So the son of man who believes in God. So the son of God, she's going to give birth to that son. So that Son, repre- uh, that woman represents the church or Israel. So the serpent is trying to get rid of the existence of the church of Israel to make us not have any influence. So what came out of the serpent's mouth? It came, it came, water came out of his mouth. He spewed water. So it says dragon here, but dragon or serpent is the same thing. Dragon is just a word that man made, but in the Greek word, it's just saying a bigger serpent. So dragon is pretty much a serpent, so it's the same thing. So the woman represents church in, the church in Israel. So the dragon is serpent or Satan is trying to get rid of that church in Israel. So, so I've got a current or trend, how the world is flowing suddenly these days. You know, these things are the fashion. These are the, this is the trend of these days. This is what's trending these days. So that's the current that allows those trends to happen. So these days, to make you lose hope in your life in believing in Jesus, to make you, you know, get destroyed easily. What is that current? What is that water that's easily trying to destroy? What do you easily fall to? What are you easily destroyed by or you lose hope? What area, what current or trend? So Satan's uh, strategy, he changes our environment, our influences, our situation, our atmosphere to what? So the Satan's strategy these days that he uses a lot is, so with what is he like promoting LGBTQ with? With mass media? or false fake mass media. You cannot not hear it, right? So when you're on the internet or when you're on your social media or YouTube, you listen to all these things. But those things, there's, they don't talk about fully the truth. They kind of little by little spread lies. So those who cannot discern if this is going to harm you or not, you will get influenced by that and you'll get drowned in the water that he's spewing out. And later on, you'll become a slave to the serpent. Do you understand? Has anyone seen a cat catching a mouse? Or has anyone seen a snake catch a frog? Or have you seen a toad catching other animals? Do you know how they do it? They give them fear. They don't eat the prey right away. The cat keeps throwing the cat or like, you know, playing with it, right? So even in the water, you know, 
the, they throw the animal up and then you know killer whale like plays with his prey too and then hit, if you get hit with that tail then you just faint so that kind of way they give fear to their prey and then later on they just leave the prey in front of them you know it's trembling they don't even think about running away the prey doesn't even think about running away so using the fear base if you make everyone talk about the same thing all those lies when you want to say when you're the only one that tries to say that's not the truth then what are you going to be conscious of you're going to be conscious of everyone else around you that is satan's scheme and this is how antichrist comes so with covid it kind of controlled over us we couldn't go out we couldn't stay within a certain distance so that was an exercise that's what the antichrist is going to do so what should we do that's i mean what is that that is the current the water that the serpent spews out the lies the the fake false messages whether it's real or not or if it's a fact or not it's not what matters to them so through the words that they're speaking now when you're deceived and you agree that's what they're trying to make you do for you to be deceived and so they can agree and that spirit will be spread out that is their goal so these days israel you know the terrorism terror you know those people are trying to deceive who are they trying to focus on they don't begin at the uh they don't focus on the start they don't focus on the starting point they don't focus on how it started or the root of it all they don't talk about the whole picture they don't talk about the whole history they just cut and talk about certain parts next to the hospital there's a hole that they shot the missile in and if, when they show the video they don't believe it why because your heart which accepts all these things depending on which way you're you know, till, till leaning towards, you're only going to listen to what you want to listen to. So if you don't see the whole picture, they don't see the whole picture, and they control people, they, you know, manipulate them, and then they become their slaves, and based on that, they kill others as well. So those who are over Israel and over um, the Palestine, this is, if you look at how they're talking with each other, they talk about different parts, parts, they only, talk, they only emphasize one picture, they don't emphasize or talk about the whole thing. And those who emphasize on the kids, do you think they actually care for the kids? No, they don't. The kindergarten preschoolers, you know, they shoot the rockets, they make it so that they cannot hit them. So what is their focus on? The Satan, those who are, you know, overwhelmed by Satan's spirit, they don't want to accept the whole thing, and then they don't want you to accept, the, see the whole thing, and then you, for you to respond, for you to know the truth. When she starts discern and start responding, you're not going to fall for his schemes anymore. So until you start discerning it, so until the child is born, until the church is built up, the Satan trying to kill you. Okay, do you understand the whole picture? so you have to see clearly about this what's going on in this world but if there's a problem so your interpretation of the world depends on what kind of damage what kind of things are you joined to so you interpret what is going on based on your own heart's interpretation that's why you start leaning towards one direction so to those who believe in Jesus God gave us something else what did he give us he gave us the Holy Spirit. So that means Jesus is in us. So who is Jesus? Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is what? The truth. Jesus is what? The life. Jesus is the way. So Jesus is in us. So when we have the right relationship with God, then we can discern and we won't fall for his scheme. So who should we kill? Oh, who are they trying to kill? The Jewish and the Christians. Those who are helping the Christians. The Jewish, the Christians, the U.S. So they're trying to kill them. So that's why they're defiling. They're trying to mess up this whole thing. That's what the whole picture is. They're trying to kill the Jewish and Israel and everyone helping them. So who accepts these lies? Those who have familiarity with them. Those who are used to it. Those who are can easily become close to those kind of things. So what we're trying to deal with today is the familiar spirit. 
So in the English it says familiar spirit, but in Korean translation, it's, there's nothing that in, there's nothing that translates it as familiar spirit. Uh, they kind of translate it as that you kind of influenced by other things so you can easily fall for it. So that's what they kind of described it in the Korean translation. That's what the familiar spirit is. You know, you're influenced by something similar, so you can fall for something similar. So, the spirit that easily attacks you starts from this spirit. And it starts interfering and bothering your your life. So your weakness, the areas that you easily fall over. So let's go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So it says familiar spirits. What is the definition of the familiar spirit? So the spirit of a dead person. So the departed spirit. So the departed spirit is invoked by a medium or some kind of spiritist. Someone who summons, calls down the spirit, you know, the medium. Those yeah, the medium, those who call down those spirits. So they prophesy over your life or they give you some kind of advice in your life. Those are the familiar spirits. So what is the foundation of that? They start from lies. And they use it for, use the departed spirit. So the familiar spirit, where do you think it's spread over the most? In which countries, people? Those who do a lot of idol worship and those who do ancestor worship. So those who you know are interested in the dead people. So the familiar spirit, based on what your background is, it kind of infiltrates based on your weakness of your background. So some people, so let's say a person, their atmosphere, the oldest person, Elder, all this person passed away, so that spirit, because that person passed away, you know, that spirit is that person is dead, so that spirit can no longer stay in that person, but that spirit doesn't want to go somewhere else. So, you know, that demon said, Don't chase us out from this area, just you know, let us stay here. So let give let us send us into those pigs, right? That's what they said to Jesus. So, the spirit that was over when that person died. You know, the body is no longer there, so that spirit can no longer stay there. It has to come out of the body. So when the spirit comes out of the body, where would that spirit go once that person dies? It would go to the place that it's familiar, right? Where that, where that spirit is familiar with. So the people, the family, have the same DNA, RNA, and learned under the same influence. So the uh, gate to that area is easily opened. So in that family line, the one who is the weakest and the one who was the closest to the person who died, well, that spirit can easily flow into that person. That's why it's a familiar spirit. Did that make sense? So let's say a family line, they have a lot, of, they lie a lot. So they lie like they they just lie so much. So anyways, so among the generational curses, the issues that repeatedly appear in your life, but if you look carefully, your whole family has the same issue. That is called familiar spirit. Okay. So, you know, something happens, but it doesn't happen just once. That situation, it happens repeatedly to everyone in your family. So not just, not, that's not just physical, but it's a spiritual issue. So we have to recognize it. 
But many Christians, what, after they believe in Jesus, and there's, even if they're living with a spiritual relationship, they don't really recognize or know about it. They only think about it as a physical issue. Oh, it's, you know, coincidentally, oh, no luck, or because of that person, or if that person didn't do that, then it wouldn't happen to me. But if you look carefully, if you, you know, change the person, you know, they still have the same issue. Because it's a familiar spirit. So you try to, you know, escape this person, but the other person also has the same spirit. So that spirit, you know, finds another person and tries and works in the same way. That's why it keeps repeatedly happening. So the familiar spirit and the spiritual ministry, it's a complete counterfeit. Uh, it's a fake of the spiritual ministry, so it deceives you. It seems spiritual, but it actually deceives you. So how can you easily know if you get triggered? You get some kind of influence or you hear a message. There's people that easily waver. Even if they hear something, they don't really pay attention. They don't care about it. They're saying no thank you to those words. But in certain areas, as soon as you hear something, you suddenly have uh, justice or suddenly you have anger or some kind of response comes out at you. Right? Yes? Some people are very fo uh, are very sensitive to relationships. Some people are very sensitive to justice. Some people are sensitive to anger, and some people are also sensitive to you know deceiving others. So, so each family, you know, these kind of things are passed down. So that's called the familiar spirit. So your life. In the end times, the thing that attacks you the most is the devil watches over your life. The devil does, cannot know your thoughts, but the words that come out of your mouth or your actions or your attitude or how you respond, that's how the devil collects data and then assesses you. Do you understand? So, you know, something triggers you, and when it triggers you, the devil watches how you respond, and he makes a circumstance easily so that you will easily respond like that. So what the devil wants. Makes you, makes you someone who's predictable. So even those who are, do politics, you know, they, they research, oh, what that person likes, what that person's style is, and how I should do. So how can I, you know, give them a hard time and make them, you know, die? Then they lay a trap so that they can fall into it. So they know if you set it up like this, they're going to respond like this. So it's the same as the devil. You know, they set you up so that you respond in that way. So the devil knows if he touches, triggers you this way, then what word comes out of your mouth? The first words that come out of your mouth. That gives a gap to the devil. So the devil collects all that data and makes you easily confused or makes you project it onto someone else. So the devil collects your weaknesses and makes you go into that situation so that you respond in that way. And then he makes you in prison. So this, if I make this person a little lonely, you know, they have a habit to drink alcohol. Then that devil will try to make them feel rejected, make them feel rejected in this relationship, that relationship. Then that person, even if you let them be, that person is going to go drink alcohol. So then what happens? Then that person gets impr imprisoned in addiction. And then from there, the devil, Satan, is very predictable. That person becomes very predictable, so that person would be in the palm of Satan's hand. So what is that? That's the familiar spirit. Do you understand this picture? So each person might have different cases, but you all have the similar tendencies and especially to you individually there's area it's just the area that you respond sensitively is different you know you have the same issue but all your responses are different so that's what the data uh, the devil collects and it makes a network it makes a system 
So if you make this the world like that, so like LGBTQ, what is the frame? If you say no, thank you, then you're saying you're discriminating. Or you're ignoring the minor groups, you know, it makes that kind of frame so that you cannot go against the LGBTQ. So then people are about that. Do you think they want to speak the truth about that or not? You know, those who are fear-based wouldn't want to speak the truth against it. Where people are gathered, they're just going to talk with those who say the same thing. Choir? Have you ever done a choir with 200, 300 people, like a hallelujah, like those kind of choirs? Have you been those kind of choirs? So if you go into your part, you can only hear your part. So if you do alt, if you only hear the alto sound, then you're going to do the alto sound because you're just following what you hear. You're just doing what you memorize, what you hear. So that's how that kind of the flow works. So if it's the truth, that's a good thing. But if it's not the truth, not only do you kill yourself, but you also make others be destroyed and perish. So you're making another current, another sound that kind of influence you're making that kind of atmosphere so then what would happen to the church so if the church doesn't respond in the right way if you don't prepare to die and what does it say at the end those who love God and those who give their life for Jesus and those who choose to die for to obey him they're trying to make a war with, against each other so the last war as we move forward, it's moving towards the last war, but it's we're already far into it. The last war, the final war, because of Jesus' name, if you prepare to die for Jesus' name, and of those who don't choose to obey and live according to his name, his word, then Satan and that spirit, you're going to get tempted if you don't choose to give your life for his name. So that's why we're talking about the familiar spirits. You have to deal with this. So, you know, God probably keep dealing with keep dealing with this issue so that we can respond to it. Because the times that are coming, we're strongly moving in that direction. So we have to clearly discern so that we can stand firm. Unless we stand firm in our position, then even the church at the end times, you know, it's going to be divided into two. Those who, you know, give their life for his name or not. Those, those who really love Jesus, that church, and those who kind of compromise with the word and just follow the flow of this world, they have the name of the church. But God's power and authority and life is dead in that church. So those two churches. Which church do you want to become? The one who loves God, right? Why are you guys so quiet? The one that's living and loves God, right? Which church do you want to be? Do you really want to become the living church? Then if we see this world, do you, is your heart like in pain? And when you look at the next generation, is your heart burning for them and you're praying for them, interceding for the next generation? You know, I don't hear anyone that's kind of sad. So follow after me, I am. So don't fall don't fall for these kind of satan's deception so what is his truth he is the way the truth and the life so those who belong to jesus christ so we talked about on Sunday. We, we kept proclaiming about his, his blood right so by his blood we are redeemed right do you agree by his blood we are redeemed and by his blood we are forgiven of all our sins do you agree so by his blood, we, we can be clean every day. Do you agree? By his blood, we are protected. Do you agree? Then we have to use his blood. We have to use the blood of Jesus. Okay? So the serpent, you know, spewed out the water, but the land split open. So which land? The land that God chose. The land with God's presence. In the territory of his God, his spirit starts to work. So where you live, are you going to change it to the land where His presence dwells? 
Are you ascended into the land of the burning bush? The land you're standing is holy, so take off your shoes. Are you going to make that place happen? Are you going to make your family like that? Really? Are you really going to make all of your family members take off their uh, sandals? The reason is because Jesus is in this house. So you cannot live according to your way. You have to choose to live according to his way. You take off your sandals, your shoes, your slippers, whatever. Do you agree? So you have to choose clearly. Don't go waver back and forth or when you get triggered. You have to examine the response that comes out of you when you're triggered and change that response. How can you overcome? How can you have victory? All the response that you've done until now, you know, devil already recorded everything. So because you're not completely cleaned up in that area, that's why the devil is going to keep coming in the same pattern to you until what happens. Until by the his word, by the spirit, the word that he taught us, until you hold on to that word and then you surrender and then respond into the new way. Make the devil flustered. Make it so the devil cannot come to you and open God's pathway and holy highway in you so that you can have relationship and connect to the heaven and that in your family, in your life, God's presence and glory will manifest in your life. Until then, he's going to keep trying to trigger you. The familiar spirit is going to keep appearing repeatedly. So every time you have to choose. You're already made by mistake. You might get a little triggered, but what should you do in that moment? So you should, I don't want to be, get caught by the familiar spirit and I don't want to live my past life again. You have to proclaim it and then immediately repent and in Jesus' name you have to start proclaiming. So in Isaiah 30, 21, it says, this is the way, walk in it. So in your ears, God will speak to you. That's what it says. Your ears shall hear a word that he speaks. So in your life, his dear direction, the truth, the way he's going to teach it to you. Don't be afraid to fight. So in the end times, the church, you're going to be in the battlefield. As a stronger, mighty warrior, he wants you to live. So you have to choose him. And when you start to change your life's pattern, the battle will start inside of you. Even as your thoughts inside of you, it kind of goes this way, and a little bit, it goes back to this. You know, you have the experience that you change how you think. You change 10 times per day, and it's going to get worse. It doesn't become more like this. That means God wants to use you. That means right now is the most important time, and it's the time to fight, but you have to deal with this issue. So that at the end times, in the midst of all these tribulations, you can overcome it, you can have victory, and you can save others. He wants you to know that you can become that kind of person. So that's why, you know, that familiar spirit keeps shaking you. Okay? So then you should voluntarily, willingly, choose to go before Him. Are you going to choose to do that? So, whether you know or not, all the things that came into you, the, all the influences that you had, you thought this was a good thing, and you were in what you're familiar with, all of that familiar spirit, do you choose to get rid of all of that? Do you choose to fight with the Word of God? Really? Do they look carefully? First Samuel chapter 28. They, the Philistines came in so Saul was afraid you know Samuel already passed away he doesn't have any prophet to help him anymore so Saul he made like a mimic imitation so he called all kill all the sorcerers and all those diviners but he can't do anything so how did he live he didn't believe he didn't do what God told him to do and he kind of mimicked the spiritual stuff, but did he did it in the fake way. So do you think the devil knows his weakness? Of course he does. He knows that he's nervous. So Saul. Was ordered to go find, look for a medium. Some guys, spiritists. Divination. It's the same thing. They all bring the familiar spirit. The base is the, the lies. 
you know, he, you know, disguises himself and goes to see the medium. And he has to bring up the spirit of Samuel. The woman recognizes that he is Saul. He says, I won't kill you. He says, I won't kill you, so bring up Samuel. And as she did, someone like Samuel came up. But in the Bible, what does it say? So every translation is different. But First Samuel chapter 28. Um, so it says divine being in NAS and then a god or a small god. In different versions, it's represented differently. But in the Hebrew word, it says small god. It says Elohim. So this Elohim, do you think this is really God? That's the familiar spirit. So Samuel died. So you know the medium called up that spirit like as if he was still alive, but that's a lie. So she's gonna talk like is it kind of uh, similar, but not the truth. So verse thirteen. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So she said, I saw a spirit. So he said, what is his form? And she said, and an old man is coming up and he's covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. He stooped at his face to the ground and bowed down. He said, he's in danger right now. But in order to kind of escape from it, he looks for the spiritual person. But what did he end up going to? He went to the familiar spirit. He was nervous, so he wanted to seek out Samuel. But, you know, the fake came out and he bowed down to that fake, that familiar spirit. So based on what he's familiar with, he just re responded to it. He didn't go against it or repent. Or he didn't go bow down before God and all the ways he's lived. He didn't even have the attitude of, I should have listened to Sam. He didn't have any of that, so he dies. That's the familiar spirit. So right now, so there's many things that, you know, it's getting triggered right now because God wants to deal with. So your first action, your first response that comes out, don't just get drawn by it. Don't just decide from the physical level and move forward with that. Don't go according to your habits. Just stop. Real quick, take a quick stop. And see your spiritual reality. Why is this keep repeatedly showing up in my life? So what's the what's the way that I've been chosen choosing all this time? What was my response all this time? It was probably the way in the physical, the way you wanted to do. So now you have to change your way. So all the responses that you've done so far, don't do it again. Because if you do the same response, then what is Satan going to do? He's going to make it into, you're a predictable person, someone that he can control, rule, and reign over, someone he can influence over. You know, he's going to bind you to be that kind of person. So it's a chance to break that. So, you know, go before God and cry out to him and learn how to respond in the spirit. And they start responding using the word of God. Whether you understand or not, choose to obey his word. So when you choose to obey his word and let it go, then the atmosphere will change. The familiar spirit will be broken. And you choose to live in the way that God choose, gives to you and don't go back don't go back to where you've been comfortable you know something that you can easily go back to because you're familiar to it so that's why it's easy to you but don't go back to that familiar comfortable place so choose that and then decide and then proclaim the truth okay we have to do it like this so that we can break through so let's look at an example from the Bible. Samson. Judges 13. So Samson, you know, that his parents couldn't give birth to a child, but, you know, Jesus, uh, the Spirit came and said, you will give birth 
So then Samson was someone who was already dedicated to Jesus. He was a Nazareth. But he said, don't, no razor shall come upon his head. Don't cut his hair. And don't feed him any alcohol. So let make him live a different life. That was the condition. But the reason why he sent Samson was to the Philistines. So it's a different from the Palestines that we're talking about, but they used to live in that same land. So the Philistines, especially in the land of Gaza. So to save those Philistines, that's why Samson saved, uh, God sent Samson. So what is Samson's calling? from the spirit of the Philistine to save Israel from the Philistines. That's what he was called for. So then Samson, you know, he was called to save them. So his calling would have a relationship, whether you like it or not, his calling would have a relationship with, he would have a relationship with the Philistines, whether he liked it or not, but for who? For Israel, that's what his relationship was supposed to be. So suddenly he grew older. And then in chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3, Sam Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. And he went up and told his parents, I have seen a woman in Timnah and the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as a wife. You think the parents understand or not? You know, Philistine, the Israelites are getting oppressed by the Philistines. But, you know, God called Samson to save his ju judge Philistine, to save Israel. You know, his spirit came to tell them, but, you know, Samson saying, I'm going down to the Philistines. He's saying, is there no other daughter in the Israelites among your people? But he went down, why? So you have to understand your calling and the life that you're living in, it has a relationship. But you have to uh, uh, distinguish it. So Samson was called as a Nazareth to protect, to save Israel, to save them from the oppression of Philistines, to save them. That's why God, by revelation, he was born. Samson was born, so he automatically, where does he go to? He goes to the Philistines, because that's where his calling is. But, you know, there was never the word to marry into the Philistine. So this is where you have to start to discern. So what does it mean to discern? So go and see the situation they're going. And if they're pressing Israel, you know, save Israel from the oppression of the Philistines. That's his calling. But rather than that, where is he getting tempted? He's getting tempted, tempted by the Philistine, the Philistine woman. That is the familiar spirit. So that starts, and in the end, he got married to the Philistine woman, and he, they live together. You know, he should just live quietly with his calling, but if you have the calling, it comes what? The calling brings power, brings anointing, you know, gifts start to manifest when you have the calling. So he's going there suddenly, a lion appeared, and he, you know, tore the lion apart and then he realized that the inside the line the bees were making hives so inside the line had honey so then he saw that he tasted the honey it was very sweet so suddenly what kind of heart did he have he wants to brag about his strength his strength he was supposed to use it for who it wasn't supposed to be to you know boast about his power but that power was given, the strength was given to save the Israel, not to boast about the power. But this familiar spirit, you know, this gap is starting to open. So he's saying, I'll give you seven days. So for seven days, if you cannot solve this riddle, puzzle, you have to give me 30 pieces of clothes. If not, I'll give you 30 pieces of clothes. And then, so then through who will they try to, you know, get the answers out? You know, they will try to get the answers out from the Philistine woman. Use the Philistine woman to get the answers from Samson. So on the seventh day, you know, he says the answer. So you do you think the woman told them or not? Of course, she told him them. So from the strong thing came out the sweet.
먹는 자에게서 먹는 것이 나오고 강한 자에게서 먹는, 먹는 자에게서 먹는 것이 나오고 강한 자에게서 단 것이 나옵니다. So they gave them a riddle. I mean, Samson gave them a riddle. I don't remember what it was, but there's no reason for them to solve it. But they already wounded from this. They were deceived. So they got angry. So you know they killed 30 people and gave him 30 pieces of clothes. So in that way, they they, they kept doing that kind of riddle and solving and giving. Later on, they went. Uh, they, he went to go get his wife, the one that he wanted to marry, but they already gave that woman away to another man. So that's why Samson felt rejected, betrayed, hatred, revenge. So all of those things came into the gap. So what was his original calling? <laughs> if you did according to what God said, then these things wouldn't happen. But he should have focused on Israel's life. In order to get rid of the oppression of how about the Israelites were going to, you know, he should have dealt with that, but he left open a gap with the familiar spirit. So, and then he, his heart kept going to this Philistine woman. And a little bit later, he went again. To who? He went to Delilah. Okay. And Samson took revenge too. You know, he, he bought, he captured 300 wolves and then, you know, set fire to the field. So that kind of revenge, because he felt betrayed that they gave the woman to another man. So this kind of revenge, murder. So back then or now, is it the same or not? It is the same. Even in Amos, you know, they took the, captured the people and put the fire. So that weighs from back then and now is the same. Why? What did they allow? The familiar spirit. Familiar spirit. So this time he went to Delilah. Do you know how many times Delilah tried to uh, seduce him? You know, four times. So this, according to God's calling, um, if you don't respond to it, and then you kind of have this leg over here, that leg over here, then that's gonna destroy your calling. So at first. You know, at first it starts off from far away, but then it gets closer and closer, you know, saying, Oh, you just gotta tie my hair, you just gotta do this to my hair. Just, and then in the end, he says, Just cut my hair. You know, he started off not really saying the secret, but then he got closer and closer and closer to each seduction temptation. And then after the, his hair was cut, he didn't know the spirit left him, and he was captured. So then. What is the familiar spirit's final? What does the spirit take from you, from your calling? He makes you blind. You know, they take out the eyes. And then what happens? You became a slave. So rather than the cow, you know, Samson pushed the grinder. And then they rejoiced seeing that. So according to God's calling, if you allow the familiar spirit, your eyes will be taken out, you'll become a slave, you'll lose all your senses. In the end, you make the enemy rejoice and make them happy. So we have to look at this picture. The calling has power, but what it doesn't have. It usually says, no razor shall be at your head, and you shouldn't drink any wine. And as a Nazarite, then who should he be looking for? He should hold on to Jesus, and he should be in the tabernacle. But rather than that, where did he go to? He went to the Gentile woman, to the Philistine woman. Instead of holding on to God, so that's the familiar spirit. If he should have responded in the right way, but what did he not have? He had the power, but what did he not have? He didn't have the strategy. He was angry. So he broke off the gates of the Gaza, and then he brought it all the way up to the Hebron, to, to the top of the hill of Hebron. So Gaza to Hebron is 60.1 kilometers, so 37.344 miles. So, you know, Samson was angry, so he took hold of the doors and the gates of Gaza, put them on his shoulders, and took them to the top of the hill of Hebron. 
and it was saw the gate post you know it took he took the bar and everything he put it on his shoulder and he went to the top of the hill that faces hebron so he had he had he was really strong but with that strength power did he save israel as he was called to he was more persecuted because of that so they said to find samson Otherwise, I'm going to torment you. So it didn't happen. So they came to find Samson and make it seem like you've been captured. And he went. So his calling was already messed up. So if you want to maintain the power, if you want to maintain the anointing, then you have to deal with the familiar spirit. So that's why you have to have revelation, you have to have a strategy, you have to have God's direction. So in the end, Samson understood and realized, so all those who were mocking him, he said, bring me to where? So bring me to the pillars which support the temple so I can lean on them. And then he asked God, I did wrong. So at the end, let me do what you want, God. So he pushed the pillars and all the men and women who were there, about how many people? The Bible is very interesting. So the number says 3,000. So 3,000 men and women under were you know buried under the pillars that he pushed so in mount sinai was three thousand people here he killed three thousand people so this day the, this day when he killed all those that was the most that he's killed but if you deal with your calling if you end your calling like that then if god calls someone as a nazareth do you think they would be happy if he just ended his calling like this so you know God gave him a direction he gave him a calling he gave him an assignment but he had the wrong direction he got caught by the familiar spirit the parents should have stopped him and said don't go and he should have calmed down and has stayed before God but his weakness he kept allowing it and he believed in his strength well what did he not have he didn't have relationship with God do you understand? So Matthew chapter 7. So not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter heaven. Only those who do according to my will can go into heaven. So my name you will prophesy. In my name you will chase out demons. But I will say that I don't know you. So those who are doing it against the, against the law, leave me alone. So in order to live your life according to God's calling, what should you do? You have to deal with this familiar spirit. If you don't deal with it, in your dilemma, you cannot come out of it. And you're going to keep getting twisted and you're just going to keep getting problems. Do you agree? So what is your priority in your life? First, who? God. Second, who? Your calling. And third, family so god calling family don't change that order that's your priority in god's kingdom the order is very important that means in your heart your priority is determined so what's decided in your heart is very important so you have to decide so that god will release it to you that his revelation can come you have to decide so that his strategy will come now you have to decide so that his wisdom will come you have to decide so that your more authority and anointing will come and you have to decide so that your vision will come his vision will come otherwise the more you put in effort the more you try to work harder it's just more in vain the more you work hard you know the, the enemy is going to be laughing you know, enjoying it, and your eyes will be taken up. Okay? So the spiritual meaning is very important. So in the end times, the last days, don't follow the, the world's flow and current. Your internet, your smartphone, all those currents, you yourself, you have to, you know, be careful. And you have to put your priority in God, put your relationship with God first. Then, God will let you know what your calling is and with your more greater power, you'll be able to rule and reign over this world. Otherwise, you're going to be pushed by the current of this world and you're going to run away. You're going to live such a, um, like a pointless life. What kind of life do you want? With Jesus every day, the life to be in victory with Jesus every day. And every day, you deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. Only those 
people in his glory would give him. Get it? So let's decide. So follow after me, Lord Jesus. Today, until now, everything that I've allowed, things that have been happening repeatedly in my life that's been appearing, that's been exposed, sometimes it's kind of irritating. Sometimes it's very tormenting. Sometimes I get annoyed. Sometimes I wish this doesn't hap this didn't happen. Then I say that, but repeatedly, the way that I've been using, I kept repeating the same way, so it didn't go away. But with a greater current, with a greater influence, it starts to oppress me. So that repeated life, I've been living that kind of life. So because of the word today, before you, God, I would never, in my family line, in my life, everything that I've allowed until now, all the words, attitude, actions, ways, all of my heart's motive, I choose to follow your will. I will cleanse it by the glorious your blood of Jesus. And according to your will, I choose to live the life being led by your Holy Spirit. So I choose to do that today. So every battle that happens from now on with your cross, as Jesus overcame everything, me in the same way, with Jesus together, I will overcome and have victory and Holy Spirit in our life intervene, help us and every day watch over my life let me understand, let me know the way the, the revelation, the power pour it out all on me so in this very chaotic times as your church all of the Satan's scheme I destroy it and the glory and the Holy Spirit's power, authority, and sign wonders and miracles. Let me become a partaker. So use me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So everyone who's listening to this broadcast, before God, I hope you choose Him. So no matter how much you try to run away, this war, based on your decisions, will change. Just because you try to run away, you cannot escape it. It's something that you necessarily you need. You have to fight. It's a fight that you have to fight. So in the end time, what you want to do, give us the power to fight. Let us seek you. And according to your way, everyone who wants to live according to your way, you know, God is waiting to pour it out on you. So in His grace, I hope everyone goes into His grace. So I bless you guys. And you say Amen.